الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and salam sejahtera Good afternoon everyone Welcome to UTM Center for Engineering Education CEE webinar series Thank you all for finding time and visiting today's webinar My name is Noraini Ibrahim I will be the MC for this afternoon session Allow me to introduce myself a bit. I am a research fellow at UTM CEE. I am also a senior lecturer at the School of Computing, Faculty of Engineering UTM, where for the past 16 years, I involved in teaching software engineering program. So Alhamdulillah, we gather here again today to participate this UTM CEE webinar series number 10. This webinar will be talk about developing problem solving skills using trees. So we have expert, we have our expert on the stage this afternoon, Dr. Zul Hasni Abdul Rahim. He will share his real industry experience on how the trees, or its longer name, the theory of inventive problem solving approach, where it can systematically be applied for understanding and creatively solving problems, especially in innovation and invention. So what is actually trees? how trees approach could be embedded and designed in our teaching and learning environment so so that our learners our student could be trained for this important 21st century problem solving skill we also especially as uh, educator would love very much to know and to learn from our expert today about this trees approach so if you think this topic is beneficial please click the share button Spread it with your friends, colleagues, and network. And don't forget to subscribe to CEE channel to get future information for the next webinar series. So before we start, let me invite you in, in Senior Dr. Zaki Amani, our moderator for this session. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Zaki. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How are you, Dr. Noraini? I'm good. How about you? Alhamdulillah, fine. You look very cheerful and happy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Introduce you first. So, Dr. Okay. IR, Dr. Uh, Senior Dr. Zaki is research fellow, same as me, at UTM CEE, and he is senior lecturer from School of Chemical and Energy Engineering, Faculty of Engineering UTM. So, I will pass this virtual mic to you now, Dr. Zaki. So, all, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, we are going to have this uh, session, which is a very inter interesting session called Developing Problem Solving Skill Using Trees. Uh, so I bet and I hope a lot of you engineers and also engineering educators, but maybe science teachers or whoever, to be here, all right? If you still, uh, if you are here alone, why not you invite the others, your friends, uh, as just mentioned by Dr. Nurani just now, and at the same time, uh, please also uh, prepare, listen carefully and prepare questions that you can put inside the comment section or private chat uh, on the chat section. Chat uh, section. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have here with us uh, Dr. Zul Hasni Abdul Rahim. Okay, Dr. Zul Hasni Abdul Rahim is presently the senior lecturer, a senior lecturer in MJIT, National JPEG Institute of Technology. Uh, just uh, um, hi, Dr. Uh, Zul Hasni. Hi, Prof. Hi, Dr. Zaki. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give a, a little bit brief background about yourself, okay? Okay, yes. Dr. Zul Hasni uh, just joined, not to say just joined, but three years ago, in 2017, joined uh, MJIT UTM in Kuala Lumpur, okay? Uh, previously, he has 17 years of experiences in the industry. Uh, he was previously attached in Proton. Okay, so this is uh, the national uh, car manufacturing for Malaysia, all right? And before that, uh, he did his uh, undergraduate studies in USM and then uh, his PhD in uh, UTM, okay? Uh, before that, I would like to just highlight that uh, Dr. Zul Hasni is actually the master, I can say the master of trees in Malaysia at the moment. So he, he is the expert, okay? We can refer to him as the expert and then uh, he has a uh, presented and trained and conducted workshop and courses about trees all over Malaysia at the moment, right? And then mm -hmm. uh, for the international trees competition, he has won two, 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 two award or two medals, something like that. But uh, I believe 
all engineers, okay, all engineers will experience a lot of problem during uh, the engineering practice. So uh, <coughs> problem solving is basically the core for engineering, correct? Okay, so we should actually know and we should learn how to do this problem solving and trees could be the answer for this, okay? Trees, okay? So uh, maybe before we start our session, uh, I just what I would like to say, Hello again, uh, Dr. Zul. So, how are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, so far so good. And um, yeah, I'm I really happy that uh, Center of Engineering Education, DTM, are giving me some uh, platform to share my uh, expertise and knowledge. Ah, yes. I bet a lot of us will be uh, learning a lot from you. Okay, basically, I, I learned about trees before, like a few years ago, and I am in the level one of oh, trees and you are i heard in level three correct so level three is considered wow very high up there <laughs> so, i when, when, I, when I read this book this trees book wow this is a very interesting book uh for inter, uh, for the beginners okay we, you can read this but then i believe later dr zul hasni will explain more about trees uh how it is very important in problem solving what are the ticks and three uh tricks uh, on uh, uh, on uh, using and adapting uh, trees so uh, okay dr Zohar, we are going to make it uh, such a way in two phase okay uh, this is the first section and then we will take a break okay and then take some questions from the audiences and then uh, after that uh, you will try to answer a few of them and then uh, we will go to the second section okay so uh, again without further ado i would like to present the session to you dr Zul. okay catch you up later all right, thank you, uh, Dr. Zaki. So, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, UTMCE, again, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I hope to share this kind of uh, interesting topic, which is talking about developing problem solving skill uh, using trees. Okay, so as we know that uh, a lot of us, even uh, graduate engineers or even uh, engineers today, uh, doesn't have uh, what you call a proper uh, knowledge, a proper uh, activity or program that help them to prepare themselves regarding with problem solving. Okay, because in the university there are so many knowledge, fundamental knowledge uh, that equip us uh, to become a, a, a good engineer. Okay, but once we step into the industry, then we face a lot of uh, challenges that we call problem solving, okay? So today, I hope that uh, you will enjoy this session and uh, yeah, feel free to answer any question uh, uh, throughout this session and I hope you are getting a lot of benefit from this program, okay? So uh, with that, I start my presentation, uh, okay? So um, yeah, as mentioned by uh, Dr. Zaki, uh, a bit of background about myself, okay? So I'm uh, getting my uh, mechanical de uh, mechanical engineering degree in USM back in 2002. And then for a long period of time, I have continued my study uh, and continue working in various uh, industry. So uh, in uh, the, what they call the previous organization that I've worked, which is Proton, they provide me opportunity for me to continue my my study further and I've done my PhD industry uh, around three and a half year and my research topic is trees. Okay, so uh, uh, in the industry, I have started work as a mold designer, uh, developing uh, what they call plastic mold uh, and for uh, electronic uh, products or even uh, food packaging and so on and so forth. And then I've been uh, given some opportunity to uh, work with a Japanese company, uh, electronic Japanese company, and from there I've learned the culture, how they uh, solve problem, how they manage uh, production, and so on and so forth. And uh, after that, I've shifted to Proton. Okay, Proton is a national car company that uh, really have this uh, capability to do research and design, uh, manufacturing, and even uh, after sales. Uh, for their cars, okay? So I have have experience working as uh, in the quality department. I have experience working in R&D, 
and my previous post is in corporate strategy under transformation division okay so uh, after i completed my phd i've been given opportunity to join utm under the faculty of malaysia japan international institute of technology and uh, without realizing that already three years so i have done a lot of uh, sharing regarding with trees and i hope my effort able to uh, resolve uh, any uh, what you call relationship between industry academy and even government uh, sector okay so currently i have uh, holding a position as a senior lecturer in utm and throughout these three years i have been given opportunity to set up a spin off company so i have so called ceo of uh, what i call siri sustainable industrial revolution and innovations number hat and a part of that i still continue my uh, role to serve uh, the country regarding with uh, trees innovation okay and then okay so uh, uh, this is overview of our talk today okay so we will talk about our main topic is about uh, problem solving skill okay so i will our storyline will be something like this starting with uh, before trees uh, my experience during trees and what i do after i got this uh, skill called problem solving using trees okay so uh, what happened before i have uh, encountered trees okay so as young engineers eh, i mentioned before i have uh, have a few uh, industry experience uh, coming from R&D, coming from production and also uh, cross uh, value chain of automotive industry. Okay, so from here, uh, as a young engineer, I have been taught with uh, theoretical all this, what you call fluid mechanics, uh, dynamics and also uh, aeronautics and so on and so forth. So all this formula, all this concept, all this uh, theoretical uh, knowledge have been uh, provided by university and I've tried my best to relate what I've learned into the real world okay and then in the real world of course there's a lot of challenges there's a lot of uh, ups and down and for young engineers uh, we are lacking uh, experience okay so this is so called like um, uh, people look uh, these young engineers have uh, what they call um, disadvantage eh? talking about understanding how uh, the operation of the industry works the processes the manufacturing and so on and so forth however there is an ideal world okay ideal world means i have worked with the industry after two years i've been promoted with to the uh, lead engineer and then after two years i will promote it with the senior engineer or i become a lead uh, what you call principal engineer and so on and so forth okay so our hope as a young engineer that we try our best to uh, learn fast in the industry to contribute and make an impact fast in the uh, our working environment however it is not really um, uh, what they call rosy okay as uh, our expectation okay there's a lot of uh, things that we need to know beside uh, using our knowledge in the academic and try to put into the industry okay so this kind of uh, world are overlapping and sometimes uh, it will become a great challenge for young engineers okay so this is uh, some uh, real experience i've faced and i don't have this so called problem solving skill yeah, in the industry and then um, within that industry i've seen there's a lot of um, um, level uh, in terms of problem solving okay uh, the ground level we call it operation meaning that all the executive all the workers all the production all the QC quality control uh, working hard in producing their product uh, according to the volume or production and so on and so forth okay so in Malaysia we have a lot of manufacturing industry and we are very a good in terms of operation okay so in the operation level there's a lot of problem coming in okay so because it's a online on process problem so there will be a lot of variation there's a lot of defects 
that uh, very tough for us to uh, solve it uh, quickly and effectively okay and then there's a higher level which we have a group of people that uh, hold a certain knowledge okay so most of them are seniors okay so they have a lot of experience handling um, problems in operation and normally they become a, a, what we call a, a, a strong reference for the industry or the organization to ensure that this person uh, become a core of problem solver okay because they have a lot they have a lot of knowledge in the operation okay so for young engineers yeah we could not like uh, overcome them or maybe go above them because we are a lack of knowledge regarding with the uh, current situation and the higher level is the authority meaning the top management okay so the top management uh, normally focusing on profit focusing on production efficiency uh, focusing on how to reduce cost, how to improve uh, productivity or efficiency. Okay, so they have their bottom line in their mindset, and they will seek people that have uh, knowledgeable in terms of processes to become the problem solver. Okay, so if you be, you are young engineer in certain industry, normally you will start from the bottom, uh, meaning you will start from the operation level. And then uh, it could let, like take two years or could be five years for you to going up to the ladder of knowledgeable person or uh, competent problem solver. And uh, to become the top management, yeah, it will be uh, very much challenging. Okay, talking about the uh, technical stream. Okay, so uh, what happened actually in the industry is there's a lot of trial and error. Okay, there's a lot of trial and error okay so even uh, in the manufacturing industry even in the maintenance uh, service uh, you call it name it eh? there's a, there's a lot of uh, problem happen in the operation and the best uh, no, the most popular approach uh, for organization uh, to quickly uh, solve the problem is try and error okay so uh, they uh, in Malaysia we are uh, strong in uh, adopting quality tools okay uh, maybe you know about Kaizen or continuous improvement okay so this kind of approach allow you to do uh, try and error okay so you do you you try to take action and then okay it's not it's not uh, what you call effective so you you try again try again try again as much as you can until you reach the the best solution okay so for certain industry they don't have time or luxury to do try and error okay for example in electronic company in the military industry uh, aviation which is critical for safety and so on and so forth even in the medical industry you cannot do try and error okay so that will be a challenges okay so and then uh, with this continuous improvement or kaizen there's also a lot of processes okay and sometimes the problem is not solved completely so what you do try and error okay so this is the real uh, situation that we have in the uh, industry right now okay okay so uh, here are the challenges huh? we're talking about operation talking about knowledge and we're talking about authority I think operation is um, uh, not much different between industry to industry but talking about knowledge uh, in Malaysia we are uh, strong in terms of uh, adopting Kaizen okay even in the government sector they have call they call uh, KIK uh, KIK uh, Kumpulan uh, Inovasi dan Creativity so they have uh, this internal team that focusing on improving processes in the organization okay so this kaizen culture have been adopted in malaysia industry especially since like 18 to, uh, 1980 okay so i think that the organization that champion this kind of uh, culture is uh, malaysia productivity corporation okay so they encourage uh, they provide the support of uh, kaizen tools to improve 
uh, productivity. Okay, so here you can see there's a lot of Kaizen tool. Huh? There's a QC circle, there's a 5S, just in time, Kanban, TPM, you name it. Okay, so this tool actually focusing more, more towards a continuous improvement, huh? step by step. Okay, but uh, there's also some uh, terminology uh, similar to Kaizen, which call Kaikaku. Okay, some call radical innovation, but I call it strategic innovation. Okay, so is a is a leaping kind of innovation that uh, different from Kaizen. Okay, so this uh, radical innovation or revolution, nice innovation able to uh, overcome any challenges you are having in your uh, uh, daily operation okay so this kind this type of innovation is not well shared okay uh, yeah even if you go to toyota you can visit their plant they will show you their shop floor they will show you how good they are in terms of improving processes uh, innovation kaizen and so on and so forth but they will not show you the radical innovation regarding with your R&D, regarding with their, what they call technology development and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is the two part I need to explain to you about this kind of knowledge okay, on innovation. So uh, in uh, industry, yeah, there's a lot of practices regarding problem solving. Yeah, it could also apply in industry but also apply for services okay so uh, this is uh, i think uh, one of the framework regarding with problem solving is i think is is related to lean uh, lean manufacturing okay so how do you solve problem okay the first step is define problem the next step is measuring the third step is developing concept the fourth step try to improve it take action and the last step is control okay so when you do this kind of framework on problem solving normally yeah you have uh, a lot of QC, QC tools uh, like uh, statistic, uh, statistic uh, process control SPC and try to define uh, or try to understand uh, what you call the variation of processes okay so for define and measure uh, there's a lot of tools we have in the quality tools uh, and then on the other end we look into the improve and control in this uh, section it is just implementation what we have identified or what will be the solution is strong uh, to be uh, applied in our problem eh? and the last part is control okay so this two end is very strong by using all the quality control tools or kaizen okay but the weakest link is in the middle where actually you need to create ideas you need to create you need to create solution you need to create innovative concept that able that is uh, impactful and of course um, effective uh, to solve the problem this part is lacking of focus okay so what they do is that's why i mentioned before uh, people uh, are choosing uh, try and error because the framework is strong on the identifying the problem and taking action meanwhile in the area of uh, creativity or innovation is weak and every time you throw the idea the idea is not effective that's why try and error is uh, suitable for this kind of framework okay so um, and then uh, after a few times sometimes uh, I've experienced a certain thing and then I thought some reflection of myself okay so is there a better way a fastest way or a impactful way to solve problem okay and what is beyond process improvement so uh, as engineer you are not all engineers are focusing on production or process improvement okay some engineers are engineering some engineers are designing things machinery and so on and so forth so they are not a part of process improvement 
So what will be their uh, alternative in problem solving? Okay, and then how to break the non-routine? The try and error actually is very tiring. Okay, some uh, of my experience, uh, what you call takes uh, more than two years to do try and error. Okay, and you don't find the correct solution till then. Okay. So no permanent action, uh, no permanent solution is just a, a try and error. So it's a very waste of resources. And then how to leap above the pyramid of culture, okay? Operation, knowledge, authority. So can you use your problem solving skill to leap above that kind of pyramid? Can you break through this kind of um, so-called uh, pyramid of uh, authority or um, uh, success okay and the last part how to avoid trial and error is there a solution or methodology or problem solving skill that if you do it one time it will solve it immediately and effectively okay so these are the things that uh, happening in my mind at the time and I try to find the best solution for it okay so, uh, yeah, this is a very short video about uh, myself, okay? So, this video uh, talking about my experience in uh, solving pro uh, what you call problem uh, in uh, quality measurement, okay? So, in Proton, we have uh, a huge um, automotive car, okay, that uh, we need to ensure every hole every part that we need to weld it together must be uh, in high accuracy okay so previously uh, our knowledgeable people uh, senior people are using traditional method okay they try to use uh, so-called jigs yeah? uh, this kind of jigs a huge jigs that maybe cost about uh, 3 million ringgit per uh, jig, uh, a very huge jig, okay, and then you will take longer time, and sometimes the accuracy is uh, uh, being challenged, uh, okay. So when we do this kind of inspection, uh, we use manual, we use a check sheet, and so on and so forth, and then we need to transfer it into uh, Excel and do a report, okay. So and a lot of problem uh, being based by this data. Okay, so when I came to Proton, I tried to use technology as a solution to resolve better solution uh, to resolve the problem better. So one of the challenges is about accuracy, and with this kind of technology, I able to uh, create the report uh, maybe just one hour. Okay, using the system. Okay. And I compare the data between uh, actual product and also the engineering drawing at the same time. Okay, so the accuracy is really high, and uh, resources is about uh, seven hundred thousand ringgit eh, compared to huge G cost about three million ringgit. Okay, so I have saved a lot of money, uh, improved productivity, efficiency, and solve a lot of problem. So with that in mind, I try to. Uh, what you call, I believe there's a, a better way to solve a problem using a certain methodology or technology and so on and so forth and make uh, the problem solving uh, really impactful. Okay, so that is uh, my first um, session. Okay, and before I uh, go into my second session, okay, so I'm open up for any question and answer and give it to Dr. Zaki for the uh flow thank you yes thank you very much uh, dr zul uh, very very interesting uh, preliminary experience sharing from you uh so the the video just now was also very interesting and uh, it's, it's it's really really amazing to know uh, the progress uh, your experiences in uh discovering uh, problem solving and so on so uh, okay we have one question there okay it's from uh, dr norza alifiana Okay, what's the difference between the differences between trees and kaizen? Uh, perhaps, can you comment on that? 
Okay. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zaki, and thank you very much, uh, Nurzal, for the question. Uh, the question is talking about the difference uh, between Greece and Kaizen. Okay, so um, uh, Tris is, uh, yeah, I, later I will show you the definition and so on and so forth. So, uh, Tris is talking about guided kind of uh, problem solving. So, uh, it is uh, what you call problem solving that uh, di different from the Kaizen. So, first, Kaizen is coming from uh, Japan. Trace is coming from Russia, okay? So, and then, um, the later I will explain detail uh, the, how uh, the, the significant difference between uh, Trace and Kaizen, okay? So, Trace is more towards uh, focusing on the mechanism of uh, thinking, okay? Thought process, okay? While Kaizen is more focused on the uh, framework of uh, improving things or solving things, okay? So, for example, uh, in Kaizen, they have uh, PDCA, Plan, Do, Check, Action. So, they have this so-called uh, framework to so-called solve the problem. They need to plan first and then something they need to do uh, to, to confirm uh, the problem has been solved, uh, check, uh, to ensure that the, the, the solution has been verified. Uh, action means you need to implement permanently. Okay, But this so-called plan do check action doesn't, uh, what you call, supported for any specific tools. Okay, So they have uh, some tool called uh, fishbone diagram. Okay, So they try to find the root cause and so on and so forth. Okay, But for trees, they have... Um, uh, steps okay they have uh, step one you need to do this step two they need to do this and so on and so forth so it will guide you uh, to a conceptual solution that eventually uh, you have not just one solution but you have uh, more solution for you to choose and from there you can uh, select which is better which is cheaper and which is uh, faster something like that okay I will explain okay. later in the next section. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks for the explanation. So, so the basic idea is okay. We know that uh, the, the, the Kaizen is from Japan, and Tris is from Russia. Okay. But then there are a lot more discussion inside there. Correct. Okay. We have another question. Okay. This is this comes from Eddie Soon. Okay. From your experience, can the solution be solved mostly based on innovative theory or conceptual, or is there still a need? Uh, to adopt new technology to solve. Okay, what do you think about this? Okay, so uh, when we talk about trees or any other like Kaizen and so on and so forth, uh, it is, uh, we need to know that this is tools, okay, tools, okay. So tools for us uh, to help us, to support us, uh, to solve a certain problem, okay. It's like uh, having a scissors, huh? okay, I have scissors here. So it is a tool to cut, okay? So this tool have their own uh, specific function that it only able to operate or to apply in certain situation or certain condition, okay? So it's to cut. So we cannot use uh, so-called scissors to uh, hit a nail, okay? So it will be broken or damaged. You cannot uh, open a, a screwdriver head or something like that, okay? So that is the nature of tools. Same with the theory, same with trees, same with Kaizen, same with the technology, new technology. So we need to know more about this tool. What actually this tool able to support us? So one of the elements that we need to understand on any other problem solving tools or even technology, what is the main function? Okay, so maybe we have uh, the technology of... Um, uh, AR, VR, okay, augmented reality, okay. So we need to know what is the function of augmented reality to solve our problem, okay. Sometimes it is not applicable, so we need to go and find a effective tool to solve our problem. So that is my uh, quick answer. 
Oh, okay, thank you very much. Okay, so we we uh, we take a, la a last question for this uh, this round. Okay, after that we will uh, move to the second part of your presentation. Okay, uh, this question comes from Haliko Lenando. When did you discover trees as a method of impactful innovation solution? Okay, so thank you, Haliko, uh, for the question. So actually, um, um, during my my experience in in Proton, okay, so I've have a lot of uh, experience using the quality tools okay so i've doing the production control quality uh what you call uh, efficiency and so on and so forth okay and then uh because i've been given opportunity to pursue my phd and uh, recommended by i think one of my uh what you call um, lecturer uh, i think Prof. Uh, Sha'ari, eh? Prof. Sha'ari from Razak School. So why don't you learn trees? So trees is really rare at that time and nobody knows about it. Okay, so I try to dig in and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, it could be like, what, what, why should I have trees when I have a quality tools that is very good in terms of production and so on and so forth. Okay, so I put myself a challenge, okay. Uh, I need to, I'm very skeptical about trees. I need to test trees. Does trees able to provide me an impactful result beyond Kaizen tools? So that is the starting point for me to explore more about trees. Okay, so, so that means you, you personally started discovering trees when you started your PhD? somewhere Correct. 2012 2013 something like that am i right yes something yes. like that okay okay and you just mentioned just now that uh the prof uh, uh shari is your supervisor oh uh, at that time he one of the committee for in phd industry i see okay uh, uh, I, I i i i knew uh my supervisor is uh prof no abubakar Okay, okay. Because uh, when you mentioned Prof. Uh, Shari, I, I knew him from when he began or started his PhD back there in Birmingham around 2000. Okay, but yeah. then that's a different story. Okay, <laughs> okay. Let's continue okay. to the second part. Okay, of your presentation. I think it's it's uh, the second the second part. Okay, so can you just uh, it's all yours now. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you, uh, Doctor Zaki. Okay. So uh, when we uh, when I've been. Uh, assigned in, uh, into a new uh, division, R&D division, I've been assigned in um, a special, uh, what you call, transformation initiative program, okay? They are focusing on uh, cost reduction. So the department is called vehicle cost reduction. Uh, it is a special group in the R&D. They are focusing on uh reducing costs in the engineering perspective okay so uh so-called engineering cost reduction become a very strong challenge for the department because uh, we cannot uh, reduce the quality of the product okay by reducing certain component we need to ensure that the function of certain system is still maintained and the cost is reduced. So how do you do that? Like cost uh, function maintain or increase, but the cost is reduced. Ah, okay. So this create a very um, strong contradiction uh, for engineers that uh, okay, how to do this and so on and so forth. And with that kind of uh, intention or goals, engineers are looking for the how part how to do it they try to go back to the this qc tools they go back to 5s they go back to lean manufacturing system they go back to uh, fishbone diagram pareto statistical process control they go to all these so-called uh, quality tools and they fail to find the best tool to use for this kind of initiative so because they involve with the design of the product and once you change the design of the product you will affect the performance and also the functionality of the system 
these challenges is not similar to process. Okay, that's why it become a huge burden for my de our our department and try to find the best solution uh, to help our engineers to solve problem and try to reduce the cost. Okay, so we try to search up and down. We search concept, we search model, a framework, a methodology, tools, and even technique, and try to support engineers to develop a lot of cost reduction proposal related to the engineering design. And uh, yeah, the, the end in mind for this department is, we call it cost innovation, okay? So, uh, as you know, okay, Kaizen, um, yeah, this is a very uh, quick uh, overview, okay, about Kaizen methodology, okay? So, we have philosophy, I think one of the question been posed, what will be the different, okay? So, we have a uh, Kaizen and then the model is we have a house of quality, uh, quality management system, we use a uh, Toyota production system, we have framework, uh, uh, PDCA, DMAC, Six Sigma, FMEA, 5S, and then from there we have tools to support, and then we have technique uh, to, to what they call ensure that uh, the quality or the process improvement are uh, successful. Okay, but all these tools unable uh, to meet the challenges uh, the, to support engineers to design a new or to improve. Uh, their design and impact the cost reduction uh, in their what you call cost uh, vehicle cost reduction activity okay so this is not work eh? kaizen doesn't work for most of the engineer that not related to manufacturing even uh, we have uh, the so called uh, six sigma okay so we have seen that each of the tool have function okay histogram okay they try to focusing on measure and analyze we have check sheet eh, to record eh, to record all the activities uh, record the data okay pareto we need to see which is the major contributor of problem okay flow chart eh, we need to we need to see the flow of the process where is the bottleneck okay uh surgical process control and so on and so forth most of the quality tools are focusing on showing you where is the problem okay showing you the specific focus of the problem the parameter that involved in this problem but all the tool unable to provide you to support you to help you to generate a good uh, innovative solution okay and then this is the gaps that most of the engineer have uh, in the industry. So, what is the solution? Uh, okay. So again, I show you challenges by challenges. Uh, yeah. Then, without trees, I, I I'm not sure where I am right now. Okay. <laughs> so, I've uh, uh, when I try to find the resource regarding with trees. Uh, there's, uh, I try to do literature review, I try to Google at that time. Eh? Most of the study been done in uh, Russian language. Okay? Most of the material in, uh, yeah, we have uh, some in US materials uh, in English and so on and so forth. And some of uh, very good material coming from Korea. Okay, so in Malaysia, where is trees? Okay, so after we discuss with, um, uh, try to find some support and so on and so forth. There is an engineer in Intel Penang that adopted trees in the uh, so in the process improvement. Okay, so uh, the expert is uh, Doctor Yu. Okay, Doctor T S Yu. Uh, he also my um, uh, what do you call first teacher in trees. So I've discussed it with my supervisor. Uh, let's go to Penang and meet uh, Dr. Yo uh, 10 a.m. Uh, in the, in Penang. So me and my supervisor woke up early three in the morning, 
uh, meet in UTM and drove to Penang. Okay, so main subuh, okay, pray in the, in in the, along the road, and then uh, uh, safely uh, meet Dr. Yo and ask them what will be the best uh, topic for me to use trees uh, in my uh, uh, engineering cost reduction program. Okay. So uh, very short discussion yeah, by the by the by the lunch hour we have completed our session and he highly recommend me the tool called trimming ah okay trimming so trimming is a uh, one of three tool that take out the component of a system and maintain the function of the system so it is very powerful tools so that is the core uh tools that i use in my research okay so that is my first encounter with trees okay so what is trees <laughs> okay we talk about a lot of trees so i need to share the definition of trees okay so trees is actually the acronym okay kata nama singkat huh? uh, in russia that sound like this t for theoria r for resenya i Izobretatil skik Zek Zadach Okay, so it's a Malay Russia slang, okay So I'm not sure it's, it's pronounced it, uh, Correctly or perfectly So uh, in um, English we call it Theory of Inventive Problem Solving Okay, in uh, Malay We call it Theory Penyelesaian Masalah Inventive ah, Okay So uh, if people ask you what is trees, then this is the acronym of trees. So, uh, yeah, I would like to introduce you the founder of trees. Uh, his name is Jendrik Solvit Altshuler. Okay, he is from Baku, Azerbaijan. Okay, so uh, he is a very passionate uh, book writer, science book writer. And um, during World War II, he been uh, what do you call? Um, been asked to support okay uh, the government uh, to uh, be a part of World War II uh, mission okay uh, but his role is actually to analyze certain documents related to technology and that document what we call today is pattern okay pattern document okay so in pattern there's a lot of information there's a lot of uh, explanation about certain technology. So they are, what do you call, they have this so-called uh, weaponry uh, technology race, eh? try to develop the best weapon and try to uh, win the war. Okay. So what Altshuler observed from a lot of patented technology, they found out there is a mechanism there is a methodology that able to solve or to innovate uh, this uh, uh, what do you call a certain system faster and better for the engineers okay so that is uh, generate altruistic contribution okay so what actually the theory is all about okay there is three uh, theory okay uh, the three element in this uh, theory of inventive problem solving okay number one uh, problem and solution always repeated across industry and across certain domain of knowledge okay so uh, certain uh, what you call uh, problem is already been uh, solved by somebody okay so for example as easy as we google things okay so we google we we try to find answer yeah, actually is a, is a comply with the, the first theory of trees. Okay. The second part is pattern of technical evolution is also repeated across industry and science, meaning that uh, the, the so-called the, the changes, uh, the innovation of uh, so-called computer or maybe telephone. Okay. So from handbell until the smartphone today. Okay. So there will be a changes. Uh, until it reach in this level okay so these changes actually find there's a pattern there's a trend that we can identify and with that we can we can uh, use that trend to solve problem okay uh, 
Uh, and then, for example, the trend of uh, te telephone, we can uh, use it for improving the trend of computer and so on and so forth. Yeah? Something like that. Okay. I will explain later in detail. Okay. And then the third part is innovative solution come outside the original problem. Okay. Meaning that if I'm a, a what do you call automotive engineer, it could be my best solution is coming from food industry. Okay? So how do I uh, solve automotive problem and the solution is coming from the outside automotive uh, industry. Okay. So these are the, the things that uh, TRI is able to support okay, engineer uh, in terms of problem solving skill. Okay. So uh, the strength of trees is actually what Altshula re, uh, able to establish. Okay, so after the uh, Altshula study about two hundred thousand pattern, a lot of invention, a lot of technology involved, Altshula uh, filter about one thousand five hundred high value problem, which call contradiction problem. Okay. So this technical contradiction problem is really what you call a breakthrough kind of uh, problem that is uh, um, related to discovery of new things and so on and so forth. Okay, so there's a lot of there's a level of innovation coming from Altshuler. Okay, and from there he tried to develop this tool called Trees. Okay, he challenged me and also you. Uh, you can wait hundred years for enlightenment meaning that solution for your problem or you can use trees and within 15 minutes you will get the solution so how good is trees is all about okay so at first uh, i'm very skeptical maybe you also skeptical about trees but after you able to master the tool the problem solving skill and you have done some uh, what you call your own project you will agree with uh, Altshuler. Okay, so please take this challenge uh, to your to your work. Okay, so uh, in trees, there's a lot of uh, tools uh, inside uh, the toolbox of trees. Okay, try to define problem, try to develop solution, try to develop new products, and so on and so forth. Okay, so all these tools is uh, available. You can Google and try to learn it by yourself. Okay, and hopefully uh, you will be improving your skills. Okay. So, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Yamani, uh, this is my certificate of Matrix Level 3, okay? So, trees have uh, five level, okay? So, Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3 is more towards knowledge base, try to master all the tools, okay? And there's an examination, okay, to pass at this level. And Level 4 is more towards uh, project base, okay? And Level 5 is thesis base. Okay, thesis. Okay, so you need to produce uh, a better. Uh, try to improve the methodology in the academic perspective. Okay, so uh, yeah, my grandmaster, uh, my uh, what do you call trees master Sergey Kovenko, uh, right now is uh, serving MIT as adjunct professor. Okay, in terms of innovation. Okay, so uh, talking about uh, process of problem solving. Okay. Um, there's a change of mindset, okay, under, under, understand the system, uh, true root cause, translate concept to impact, uh, solution and resources, and also what you call execution, okay. So I try to uh, lay out the process of problem solving skill, okay. So the first part is a uh, change of mindset, okay. So as you know, uh, when you go to the problem solving zone, okay, Basically, you need to have a, a formative mindset. Okay, whatever you want to experience during this process is actually to equip you to strengthen your knowledge and also your skill in problem solving. Either the problem is solved or not solved, which eventually solved. Okay, so it is a process for you to take benefit out of it. Okay, and you need to be optimistic, meaning that if uh, you try your best and the problem is not solved actually you doesn't have the tools or the information eh, uh, enough information to solve your problem 
okay so first you need to set the mindset straight okay so uh, in uh, three theory uh, repeated problem and solution so don't worry actually your problem have been solved by somebody somewhere sometime and it could be like they have more than one solution okay so is is nothing new actually for your problem to be solved okay and this is the challenges that we need to have as a young engineers or a problem solver okay uh, and then we need to know that the the technique or the process of problem solving you need to have this kind of diverging uh, perspective and converging perspective so when the process of problem solving need a lot of idea you need to have a diverging kind of mindset uh, such as uh, brainstorming tools and so on and so forth okay when you need to ensure that there is only one best solution for you to solve the problem then you need to converge your mindset okay so three is able to have support in terms of creativity innovation thinking process and supported by the tools okay so three is able to do this problem solving approach systematically so this is a very sh uh, short video regarding with uh, trees i hope you can uh, enjoy this uh, short video
Okay, uh, so I think uh, I need to speed up the process. Okay, uh, regarding with the uh, what you call um, uh, the video. Okay, I think you can go to the YouTube channel and try to find about trace and brainstorming. So there will be a uh, resource that you can go there. Okay, so I need to speed up the process. Okay, I think um, we almost. Uh, Kind of time, out of time, okay. So skill number two is actually uh, understanding the the system, okay. So when you face a problem, uh, Tree is able to recommend you to see in the system based perspective, okay. So as a product which is have the problem, consider as a system, and then outside that product we call it super system, and inside this product all the components we call it subsystem, okay. So by do this categorization, we able to find uh, the 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 relationship eh, between the system and also the problem that we need to solve. Does the problem coming from the super system? Does the problem coming uh, from the system itself, or it coming from the subsystem? Okay. Uh, okay. This is some example that I would like to share to you about how we want to understand uh, system based uh, perspective okay so we have this fan okay stand, uh, table fan and we try to understand what is the main function of this table fan okay so uh, the answer from the user perspective is try to cool down okay to cool down my body my, my the room and so on and so forth okay and then uh, I, I will I will say that that, that definition is wrong, okay? Uh, because uh, cooling is the effect of using the fan, okay? So actually, the fan itself, the main function of fan is actually try to move air from the back areas to the front using the the fan. Uh, the the fan is spinning, okay? So they try to push air. They try to blow the air by using the fan, okay? If uh, the the fan unable to push the air, then the fan can become useless. Okay, so this kind of perspective is different from the user perspective and from the inventor perspective. So this is one of example that I need problem solver need to have this kind of skill. Okay, not the perspective of a consumer or user. But you need to solve the problem from the perspective of inventor, designer, or manufacturer. So this is another example. Okay, uh, eyeglass. Okay, what is the uh, main function of eyeglasses? Okay, from the consumer or user perspective, they will mention that. Oh, okay, this is for to see clearly. Okay, but from the engineering perspective, from the system based perspective, the the function of sunglass uh, eyeglasses is actually the glass itself they try to refract the light and focus on the uh, inside your eyes and you can see it very clearly okay if the glass in the eyeglasses unable to reflect light then your eyeglasses is useless okay so you need to ensure that the understanding of system functionality or system based perspective uh, is avail is uh, available for you to solve the problem. Okay, the last example I give you is pen. Okay, if we ask people what is the main function of pen, is actually they will uh, they will immediately say it's to write. Okay, but it is from the user perspective that they want to use pen to writing uh, for writing. Okay. But the pen itself, if you become a pen, uh, if you become a pen, actually your main job or your main role as a pen is to make marks or to uh, to distribute the ink. Okay. So if you unable to make marks, how expensive you buy the pen, uh, but it is useless because it cannot carry the main function. Okay. So all this uh, product or system. Uh, we need to uh, see things in the system-based perspective. If you see that uh, system-based perspective is clear, then you can solve your problem easily. Okay. 
So you need to understand how does it work, okay? What actually inside this system, okay, that, that create this function, okay? What is the main component? Which component have problems? And how to make the, the system better, okay? So uh, in skill two, you need to have this mind, mindset, okay? So you need to shift from consumer mindset to the inventor mindset, okay? So because the consumer mindset, sometimes they provide you information that is subjective. I, 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 think this is, I think this product is problem. So it's doing assumption, okay? But for inventor, for problem solving, for engineers, you need to solve your problem objectively, yeah? okay? So you need to use voice of system. You need to see uh, the problem from the uh, system-based perspective. So this is some uh, case study I've done in Proton, try to develop new products, okay? Uh, liquid bumper, okay? Liquid bumper. So how I want to do this? I need to understand the function of the bumper, okay? How does it work in the product and how to improve it better, okay? So if you know how system works through the uh, system-based perspective, you can easily work or solve the problem better, okay? The third skill is finding the root cause, okay? When you use the system-based perspective, you will try to look the, uh, into the culprit. Uh, where is the culprit, okay? Uh, who is the culprit, okay? So you try to find which component that have the issue that carry this problem, which function have the problem, which process, which area, how long does it take to create this problem, okay? So system-based approach is very critical for problem solver, especially for engineers. Another perspective is looking at the sequence of event, okay? Before the tire got punctured, there must be something that been happened before the problem exists, okay? If we understand the sequence of event better, it could be we try our best to improve a certain condition and avoid the problem uh, occurring, okay? So, this uh, so-called uh, sequence, uh, what you call event approach, also one of the skills you need to have in having this kind of problem solving, okay? So, to find the root cause, you need to go to the system, to the component, to the function, uh, to the shape or to the feel of the system. And the most difficult skill for people in problem solving is blaming game. You do not blame people. You blame the system. Okay? So it is easier for you to improve the system. Instead, you are improving people. Okay? So skip people. Try to improve the system better. Okay? So this is uh, the, 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 what you call the advice coming from this. Uh, skill uh, of problem solving. So this is some example of activity I've done in uh, Proton. Okay, we develop our engineers. We we break things. Okay, we try to understand the component, the system, and we try to implement trees uh, as a part of problem solving. Okay, the fourth skill uh, I need to share with you is about imagination. Okay, so some study mentioned about. Uh, uh, creativity, yeah? the older you get, the less creativity you are, okay? So, creativity is important in generating good ideas, okay? More ideas, uh, outside the box kind of idea, okay? So, as you grow older, okay, you experience a lot and normally you are fear in showing your creativity, okay? So, this is the thing that you should uh, improve your skill regarding with your imagination and creativity, okay? So, in three perspective, okay, there is a, we start with a specific problem and then we try to generalize problem, okay? The purpose for us to generalize problem is actually to make sure that everybody understand the problem clearly, okay? And then we try to model the problem into a specific model, uh, engineering contradiction, uh, physical contradiction, substance field analysis, so that we able to simplify 
the problem to solve okay and then from there the concept solution will came out yeah, using the inventive principle and so on and so forth okay this able to break our inertia in our mind and also in our biasness okay so we try to eliminate bias okay so some uh, people with certain role have their bias towards their interest okay but with this kind of perspective we try to eliminate this kind of bias okay without trees people receive specific problem and suddenly they jump into a specific solution through try and error unfortunately some of the solution is not effective okay that's why we need to use trees to solve the problem correct at the first time okay uh, okay uh, one of the element that we have in trees is 40 inventive principles okay so we go back a bit okay this is a conceptual solution okay so from conceptual solution you try to uh, implement a specific solution okay so from this inventive principle we need to link between the actual problem concept problem concept solution actual solution okay so we try to apply this uh, principle into our solution and with that it provide you some indicator it provide you some clue it provide you some concept idea how you want to resolve this Altschuler developed this uh, 40 inventive principle from thousand of pattern okay so basically all the problem coming from this 2000 patented technology the solution is inside this 40 inventive principle so how how good is that okay so this is what Altschuler recommended so this is uh, another example i've done in proton okay there's a product in the seat eh? car seat that use this so-called ball bearings okay so this ball bearing need to be lubricated okay and once the lubrication is gone then it cannot move well okay? sometimes it broke okay so how we want to go beyond this kind of uh, issue and use innovation uh, trees to overcome this kind of challenges okay so after a few study we found out there's a, a sleeve bearing okay doesn't have the ball bearing okay because the ball bearing so many components inside the bearing one is broke and everybody is uh, everything is jammed eh? stuck okay but how about the sleeve bearing doesn't have any bearings okay and then we try to do some study and we found uh, teflon coated bearing okay so teflon coated bearing is new and this technology have been used commonly in frying pan okay non-stick frying pan okay so because it's lubricated it can become a coated and have less uh, friction uh, surface okay so this technology coming from this food industry or oil and gas have been transferred outside to inside of automotive industry okay we use this in our uh, seat yeah? uh compared to our previous uh, ball bearing it is simpler and of course it is cheaper but the function is still intact okay so this is the thing that trees able to help uh, our engineers eh? and uh, the most uh, amazing uh, what you call bearing there is a polymer bearing okay so polymer bearing also similar to teflon okay contact bearing but uh, but the polymer or already been customized or embedded with lubrication okay with uh, uh, what do you call we can modify the strength we can modify the the deflection or the elastic elasticity of the material okay so without the ball bearing component eventually the function is still there okay so this is the achievement we have established in previous okay the fifth skill okay uh, i thought the, the last skill i think uh the skill to predict future ah okay this is rare okay if only you can predict what happened 
tomorrow okay so uh, with this kind of uh, tools that have in trees we call it trend of uh, in uh, ev ev uh, trend of engineering system evolution okay so Altschuler have mapped out a certain trend in trees how technology change okay if you follow this kind of trend eventually you will improve your innovation of the product okay even you can see the step of changes you can leap beyond this step okay so i think uh, the the main user of um, trees in terms of uh, trend is samsung okay you try to google trees samsung you can find out they are the main user of trees and how they overcome uh, even Apple or even a big giant smartphone company okay uh, so these are the thing that uh, you can have to solve the problem by having the power to predict the future ah, okay so I show you a quick example I have done in Proton uh, talking about development of uh, headlamp okay what technology we should use what kind of trend we should use uh, trend of coordination, trend of trimming, trend of human involvement, trend of super system. So we can predict what's next, what's next, what's next. Okay. And then, uh, okay, this is uh, the summary of my project, my PhD. Okay. So I use trees to solve problem, to reduce cost. Okay. Uh, to improve uh, material utilization, uh, to improve product complexity. Okay, to make it simpler, to reduce weight of the product. Okay, as you know that automotive car, uh, weight is a big concern. Okay, about fuel efficiency and so on and so forth. Okay, how to reduce the weight of the, the system and improve the strength of the system at the same time. Okay, so trees able to do it beyond optimization. Okay, because engineer in design, they always resort to optimization of the design. Okay. And the best part is I try to circumvent pattern, okay? I try to study uh, engine uh, pattern by Volkswagen, okay? I try to change the system and adopt it in a uh, family engine, a new family engine for Proton, uh, cylinder deactivation system, okay? So it is uh, from skeptical of trees into a very strong uh, practice, uh, practitioner of trees ah, okay so in summary this is all the tools I use okay and yeah, implementation is very easy after you get a very good solution you just implement it easy okay but you need to make sure that your solution is the right solution okay so um, I reach into the last part of my presentation which is what happened after I've learned trees okay so I become a, a reference person regarding with uh, trees application in Malaysia. Okay, uh, I've been uh, what do you call mentioned in uh, report uh, what do you call economic transformation program. Okay, under uh, MDEC. Okay, so MDEC really promote trees at that time, and I have uh, get. Uh, support uh, by MDEC regarding with learning trees and I supported MPC okay they are very strong in process improvement now they will take up uh, trees as a product innovation yeah? and then uh, after I implemented trees in Proton uh, the company able to save 13 million ringgit per year so that's huge uh, that's a huge impact uh, to Proton so even the use of trees in cost reduction have uh, improved exponentially uh, regarding with the performance of cost reduction. And uh, trees is inside our national textbook. Okay, so if you go to uh, this textbook, textbook called uh, Recurrentok and Technology Form Two, the first chapter in the textbook is trees. Ah, okay. So if you are uh, having your kids uh, form 2, you ask them if they take up RBT, uh, uh, design and technology, all school in Malaysia learn trees. 
Okay, so I'm a part of this uh, is uh, uh, promoting uh, trees in the in in uh, Ministry of Education, and trees have become industry standard. Okay, I've worked with Sirim and uh, Sirim Eight, yeah, uh, innovation management trees as a part of tool in uh, innovation management standard. Okay. And this is some activity done in the in the company. And trees also been injected into the industry for readiness assessment. Okay, this is a huge uh, initiative by the government. Uh, try to help industry in industry 4.0 uh, development eh, in terms of technology. So I developed my books called Standard and Guideline for Malaysia Ford Industrial Revolution and this book have been taken up by the government and developed this so-called industry forward readiness assessment. Okay, So uh, this is a, a part of that uh, content where actually we go by the digital parameter and we try to use S-curve, eh? try to predict maturity of industry 4.0 in terms of digital Okay, and we use uh, the trend. Okay, so this is short video about uh, my involvement in uh, industry forward. Imagine your industry. If you embrace industrial revolution 4.0 and automation, believe me, we can become a very, very successful state. That we need to be ready for the next generation of things. Our industry now is moving forward into Industry 4.0. Technology reset is very crucial for us to be able to be more competitive. It's already part of uh, organization. The industry must go forward. In order to participate in the Industry Forward Assessment because we know where are we going. Uh, to assess our readiness level, whether we are really ready. All angles of manufacturing, management, and human resources is, is covered. We know where the gap are, so that we can uh, make our plan how we want to move uh, forward. It also has um, shortened our period to assess our readiness and uh, expedite our process. Okay, so I will uh, skip a bit. Okay, so later on, this problem solving skill will be embedded in a lot of uh, uh, what they call skill in Malaysia. Try to develop standard uh, out of this so called trees problem solving. Uh, and I established a spin off uh, trees based company in UTM. Okay, so it is, uh, is uh, what they call one of my achievements and uh, able to uh, get a grant uh, using trees methodology okay so it's also a part of my uh, latest achievement uh, on the covid uh, project okay and uh, that's all for my presentation i think i've uh, ex exceeded the time given so i giving back the floor to dr zaki thank you very much thank you very much uh, uh, dr zul hasni it's okay it's okay no problem it's it's very very uh full pack with information i know this is this is i mean this one hour or maybe one hour and a half is not sufficient for you to present basically everything right okay uh okay uh i would like to comment but then uh we have some questions here that uh we have to entertain so let's go on with the first one uh it's from uh dr noraza yusuf can trees be used? Can trees be used in software engineering project? Okay, earlier on, uh, Doctor Seth has uh, briefly answered. Maybe you can also briefly touch about this. Okay, so uh, talking about the nature of uh, software engineering. Okay, so we know that it is uh, try to develop uh, software and so on and so forth. Uh, and then this software normally uh, been um, uh, the fundamental related to programming language or even algorithm okay so uh, trees uh, they start with the t theory of inventive problem solving there is aris uh, aris eh? start with a 
it stands for algorithm okay so algorithm for inventive problem solving is actually try to create a problem solving process that use sequent uh, what do you call uh, algorithm approach okay so this algorithm approach able to like um, uh, like simply like take a calculator and key in your problem and try to press go and it give you a solution as mm. easy as that ah so but the methodology is quite complex but the function is similar like this you try to put your problem inside a uh, algorithm and they will eventually process that and guide you to solve your problem by yourself ah okay that that kind of mechanism of that kind of methodology is available in trees and i hope it will able to support uh, software engineering uh, project yeah from from uh, my understanding actually trees can support basically almost everything in the world correct yeah Basic, uh, maybe uh, but not maybe the, the talk about iman taqwa uh, that is different thing right <laughs> okay so let's go to the 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 the, uh, the next question Okay, it's from Wendy Tan. Any recommendation on how to teach trees to students, such as what kind of assignment we can design? Okay, so uh, perhaps you have the experience with uh, KPT, the commentarian. So maybe you can uh, maybe uh, give some of your insight briefly. <clears throat> okay. So uh, first of all, we need to know uh, the level of student. Okay. So if the student is a school, uh, what do you call secondary school student, we need to know what actually their general knowledge. Eh? Normally, what are the things that they are familiar with? Eh? Normally, we try to take any uh, example in the classroom or even in daily uh, environment. So with that, we try to show something that might be interesting for them. For example, we show uh, talking about nature, talking about uh, rare things that uh, the nature uh, unable to explain clearly. So we need to spark, we need to spark their interest regarding with a certain things. Okay. So from there, we try to give some challenges. Okay. Because the interest will push, will drive the student towards uh, solving certain challenges okay so this element is critical not just uh, give a problem to them okay i give it to you try to solve it okay but actually to drive their uh, inquiry uh, kind of uh, behavior try to find their uh, motivation in solving the problem that actually most uh, more important than solving the problem so when students try to have this spark and they will drive by themselves and we are happily to support this kind of student with the tools that trees offer okay yeah okay so so basically uh yeah there are certain ways on uh, and method how to to tackle the students right okay yeah. but then maybe later on maybe uh i hope uh a lot of or maybe all of the participants here can visit your facebook group okay so that from there maybe they can further ask questions hey by the way i already have uh, applied uh, to join your facebook group you haven't uh, uh, approved yet so after that i want to also ask questions so the rest of uh, the participants can also ask questions okay uh, so far there are about 1500 uh, people or members inside the group so i think after this Seminar, maybe there can be a flux of people joining suddenly. So you you stand by, okay? <laughs> okay, yeah, let's go to the next question. Okay, okay uh, it's from, uh, I hope I pronounced this correct, JJ. JJ, okay. <laughs> Dr. Zul has said, based on your experience, uh, what are the main challenges to implement trees in various kind of manufacturing company, especially the SME in Malaysia? Uh, this okay. is very, very relevant to you, okay, okay. based on your experience. Okay, so uh, thank you, Gigi. <laughs> so, uh, okay, first of all, if uh, as uh, what I've experienced in Proton, we have uh, this called, called Kaizen kind of tool that really embedded in, in our culture of manufacturing. And try to introduce something new is quite um, 
hostile okay so people normally check what is stress uh, uh, i don't want this stress uh, show show one okay so <laughs> normally that we try our best to adopt trees not to replace trees okay we try to integrate trees with other uh, current existing tools okay and then we need to have a small win okay we need to apply trees in very small scale and try to get the impact first okay and from there we can upscale it into a bigger or uh, what do you call a uh, bigger budget okay bigger scope and bigger impact okay so that that is the strategy how we want to uh, apply trees in SME in, uh, in we want to introduce uh, trees into uh, what do you call uh, organization if we try to bring trees bigger and it just uh, like boom something like that and sometime over expectation that the trees unable to perform well uh, uh, what do you call beyond expectation and sometimes they will overwhelming uh, overwhelming yeah overwhelming mm. so it's a one hit wonder so it's mm. not a good strategy uh, to introduce this so we take the small win strategy okay so bit by bit uh, gradually right gradually okay gradually. okay i hope that answers uh the question okay we have a next question very simple one where to get your book doctor the book <laughs> that just now you mentioned uh, you have uh, written that book right okay okay um actually i don't have a what you call proper book actually that that the book that uh, dr zaki uh show in the uh, early session is not mine okay so it's belong to dr yo i think you can google uh, there's a few books available in in online so uh, i recommend you to read about it is uh, more towards uh, what you call manufacturing uh, kind of application and there's also another book on the business application uh, by dr yo okay but then uh, the the book that you mentioned just now inside your slide Previously, next to the uh, forward Malaysia oh. industry forward, uh, uh, what, uh, then what you can you can you can get it online also. We already published uh, on Google. Book. Okay, uh. maybe you can uh, post it inside your uh, your Facebook group later on. Okay, yeah, sure. and and maybe we can also from CE uh, further provide information uh, inside this uh, YouTube under this YouTube uh, description as well as in our CE website. Okay. Um, uh, but then maybe if Mr. Haliko Lenando is referring to this book, this is yeah. uh, just now as mentioned by uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Zul. This this one is mentioned. This one is authored by three person: uh, Yoh Tiong San, Dr. Yoh Tiong San, Yoh Tae Jin, and Song Chia Lee. Okay, so yeah. I believe your mentor was uh, I mean is uh, Dr. Yo, is it? Yes. There are two Dr. Dr. Yo. Yo uh, Tiong San, maybe. TSO. Uh, TSO. Okay, okay. TSO. Okay. Yeah. So this this book is also very good, very simple book. Not to say very simple. Uh, is it's a very informative book. Okay. So very very good. So the the 40, uh, 40 solutions are there. 70, 76 standard invention solutions are there as well. But then most importantly, we want uh, the audience to get your book. Okay, so the, the the book that you 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 written as well as the, your contribution into uh, industry forward uh, is very very impressive. Okay, uh, I I just would like to 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 wrap a little bit. Okay, so it's amazing to know that you are actually being involved in the standard together with Serum, and you have been uh, contributing significantly with uh, the the Ministry of Education in terms of uh, the subject RPT, which is very very amazing. Uh, my, my my daughter just passed form two so now she's in form three so she passed that moment so but it's okay maybe my next daughter okay and then uh, uh the fact that you are the national trees expert and being a reference point for malaysia that's basically super okay very awesome and then uh i think uh, uh the, the 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 reality that you managed to set up this spin of company with utm is also uh, one stepping stone which is uh such an amazing uh, achievement okay so i think what you 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 should do now is uh, to 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 have your own book and then you to have uh, maybe more trainings uh, more more sharing to to the grassroots 
to our younger generation so that they, they can know but then uh, before that I, i i want to ask just one question okay before that uh, if our students or our students from university or young engineers have to choose between studying or mastering kaizen compared to trees which one will you advise them to do which one first okay so uh, the the straight answer is actually based on the nature of your your career eh, or, or your focus of career so if you are uh, what you call focusing more towards uh, process innovation uh, then i think kaizen is the best eh, the most reliable tools that been used all over the world uh, but if you go beyond uh, process then you need to have trees Okay, okay. Thank you very much for for the answer. So I think we have uh, already touched one hour and thirty five minutes already. So that's quite long. And then we have just now we have up to one hundred forty five viewers. Uh, before that, uh, earlier on, I think uh, slightly touching the first hour or the the, the first thirty minutes, it was like ninety viewers. So this is a very interesting. And uh, for the audiences. This is actually going to be this going to stay permanent inside CEE YouTube channel. So you can always refer to the video anytime and you can also share the video anytime. Okay, so I want to say thank you very much Dr. Zul Hasni Abdul Rahim for your excellent sharing, uh, very meaningful. I believe a lot of people here learn a lot including me myself even though I have I am I think I think in 2050 when when uh, during the time I got that book I went to that training in UTM so I think that time maybe this uh, Dr Yo came but then mm -hmm. I forgot I need to refer back to our director okay about <laughs> this okay so uh with that thank you very much I would like to pass the session to Dr Noraini she will further explain and uh, publicize our coming RCE Okay. Okay. Pass to you, Dr. Noraini. Thank you very much, Dr. Zul. See you. Assalamualaikum. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, our speaker, Dr. Zul Hasni, and our moderator, Dr. Zaki, for a fruitful and informative discussion. Not forgetting, thank you to all audience that remain seated until the end of this webinar. I believe everyone gained new knowledge from this session. And hopefully we could apply in our teaching and learning and even in our own day-to-day -day life activities as for me i will remember the look for culprit statement as one of the skill to find the true root of the cause of the problem as software engineer i believe that probing the problems in a system-based approach okay so please don't forget to fill in the attendance survey and you will get a e certificate of appreciation for joining us today Before we end our today's session, another important reminder is our upcoming virtual regional conference in engineering education, RCEE 2020, that will be organized through online platform from 29 from 29 to 30 September 2020. Okay, let me share the screen for. Uh, Share it. Can you see the RCE poster? So, I don't think I can. Okay, it's okay. Right. So, uh, the theme for the RCE 2020 is Engineering Education Leadership in Uncertain World. Okay, so please browse the RCE website uh, for further information and registration. We look forward for your participation in RCE 2020. Thank you and see you again in the next UTMCE webinar series. Have a nice day. Thank you.